Welcome to A Closer Look, where I take a deep dive into my latest videos and show you how to play my favorite parts of the songs. This week, I'm starting with Protest the Heroes, Limb from Limb. <laughs> Now two parts you're going to want to watch out for when learning this main riff are from the third measure to the fourth measure. When you skip from the low E string to the high E string, now, I would I would make sure it's whatever picking pattern you're most comfortable with, but I'm most comfortable crossing the strings from an upstroke to a downstroke on the uh, higher strings. So I just make sure to end that last chug on an upstroke so that it's more comfortable for me to skip the strings with that downstroke later. And the other part is the last measure of the riff. For me, that's it's too slow at the tempo the song is to play that as a sweep, even though it's one note per string, it's too slow for me to come play all downstrokes with, with that sweep, so I, I alternate pick it because that's more comfortable to me, but that's that's a pretty that's a pretty difficult uh, it's pretty difficult to alternate pick, but it's also for me I think it's pretty slow to sweep pick also, so that's something to watch out for when you're learning that one. This next riff comes right in between the two synth solos. It's actually my favorite riff in the song. And uh, I don't think it's too difficult, but there's a few spots that can give me a little, gave me a little bit of hang up. The first one is being able to go from the second fret to the chord shapes that come after. And so something that I do, that I did to, when I was learning the song, it was just practicing playing that 1 16th note in the last beat. And so that's just something that I do to get get those transitions a little better because sometimes playing it slowly, I still have a lot of time to change my fingers over. And in playing in the song real time, I have to do that very quickly and it's much easier to practice just that small section and it really helped me learn it much faster. And the other part that also gave me trouble was the uh, fourth measure and the eighth measure. And mostly, mostly the eighth measure. It was just the, the 30 second notes. They didn't really, I couldn't really feel them. I couldn't feel where they were supposed to land. And what helped me get through that was playing them as, as 16th notes downstroked. So all I was doing was taking out all the upstrokes so that I could get a better feel for the time. And so the eighth measure would sound like this. And that's, that's a much easier rhythm to get in my head. So now all I got to do is add the upstrokes. And it, it, it came much quicker. Alright, this riff is the riff I call the drunk riff. It's just a weird out, out of time, it feels out of time, kind of. And what it's doing is just going back and forth between eighth notes and eighth note triplets, which sound kind of weird next to each other, and going out in between 4-4 four, four, and 9-8. And so 
if 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 it seems a little daunting, like odd time signatures, weird time shifts, it's it's not that bad actually. It's the first measure, like I said, just four four, just four eighth notes, then six eighth note triplets, and then the second. The way the second measure, the way I, I see that nine eight measure, it's almost the exact same. But instead of that that last beat being three eighth note triplets, it's instead three eighth notes. So then you just feel it, just the same speed as everything else. And so I think thinking of it that way, th really breaking it down into sections and understand how it works with the beat, really boost your ability to play it. And it, that, thinking of it like that helped me play it a lot. Now this riff, I call it the groove monster. It's the head banger that ends this, ends this whole song. And um, the only reason I wanted to showcase this, it's not because it's very hard, because it's definitely a pretty easy easy riff, at least the way that I'm playing it. I just really like how the harmonies on top, the, the second guitar part, how it, uh, uh, how it's doing major thirds the whole time. When a lot of the time we think of these metal, hardcore metal stuff, we think everything's got to be minor, everything's got to be diminished. But uh, you can get a really cool sound out of, out of using, out of, major especially on everything you get a very it's almost creepy sounding very regal i don't know it's just a really cool sound and i just wanted to showcase that because i think it's great and also one more thing if you notice in my video and in this video i notated it all is just when he uh, in the first and second measure i'm notating that as just triplets but what i'm fairly certain they're actually doing is doing a almost like a gallop with adding 16th notes in there and I'm just just not very confident. I wasn't confident enough to do that uh, for the video. And if you, if you got a faster arm than I do, then for sure go for it. And I think that also highlights that it's important to be able to play to your own strengths. And if, if something like that, I don't really think changes the way the riff sounds. And so I, I kept it in like that because if I played it better like that. It sounded cleaner for me. And that's for me, is the most important part. These last two riffs I wanted to showcase just based on the way that I play them and the way I think they could be used as exercises. And now it's the diminished riff, the second riff that comes after that intro and that verse kind of part. And the second one is the neoclassical part that happens a little later. And if you notice the way I was playing that, I, I was alternate picking the whole thing, even though it was one note per string. And I think that's pretty important because I mentioned it earlier with the intro riff. <laughs> And I and I that I alternate pick that instead of sweeping, and I do it for these two because at that slower tempo, it I have a lot more control over what I want to do and over the tempo I have if I'm alternate picking. And it's at this weird speed where it's a little fast to alternate pick and it's a little slow to sweep, at least for me. And so I really worked out alternate picking this stuff because it ultimately it ultimately ended up a lot cleaner, I think. And even, I'm not, I don't have the tabs for this part, but even the, the part after the main riff the second time, I'm alternate picking that also. And I just think that these two riffs, if you wanna, if you wanna really build up your alternate picking, I think doing one note per string stuff really works wonders on that. And I think that second, these two riffs,
I think those work wonders as, as alternate picking exercises. And I honestly think anyone, not even just, just people wanting to learn the song could use those licks as ways to help their own, their own alternate picking. And I think that's really important to be able to pull things from real songs that sound like real music into your, into your repertoire for practice. And I think that's very important. And yeah. Thank you for watching if you've made it this far. Uh, this is a pilot, I guess, for something I want to be doing after every video I make on YouTube. I want to post one of these where I go through, you know, uh, how, what my approach is to learning it, uh, what I pulled from the song. Maybe I didn't go into much detail on some of that stuff. In this one, I really want to get into things that helped me learn, things I'm pulling from the songs musically and for, you know, practicing my own technique. And I really think it's important to see uh, that. I think that's some valuable information I could pass along, I guess. And I think I'd be, I, I, I could be better at it. I don't know. All of this is unscripted, even though it's unscripted. I'm just, uh, I've been just talking about the riffs, I guess. If you think it'd be better if it's scripted, if you got other suggestions for me, things you'd like to see me do in these, leave them down below. Cause I'm definitely going to keep trying it at least for a while. And, uh, yeah, if you haven't checked the description, I've got a PDF of the tabs. I know they're on screen, but I got a PDF down there so just so you can pull away. I know I didn't go over the whole song. I don't think I'll ever go over the whole song, but it's just some of my favorite parts. And this is a large bulk of the song. You know, it really head start on learning it if you're learn trying to actually learn the song. And a lot of these riffs, like I said, was talking about at the end, really good for your own technique. And yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, again, if you watch this far, thank you so much. This is, you know, work in progress for me. I really hope to make better videos in the future. I really want to help everyone out. And yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.